Adina Institute for Leadership and Entrepreneurship, Mile. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Holly, and um, welcome to everybody that is joining from, from wherever you are. Very much looking forward to uh, spend the time with you and share my thoughts on leadership. And I trust that you will find it stimulating and uh, useful. It's really quite exciting to, uh, to connect with you and I hope the connection is successful. So if I can proceed then, leadership proceed. is without question a, a broad and intricate subject and area for development. And it's also a field of study which I think might leave people with the impression sometimes that you need to be educated to understand leadership. Sometimes people might feel even highly educated. Um, oh, let me just close this. Not sure what that was. And um, However, from the perspective of a follow follower, I think it, it is quite simple and I do believe that we find the essence of leadership and uh, the most important truths about leadership in, uh, in simplicity and the simple way perhaps that followers would look at uh, uh, what they want to see and what they expect from leaders before they give them their full support. So this is really what we will be uh, exploring and I'd like to discuss with you. So I think the first question that uh, a follower would like the leader to answer would be what will you model to me before I can give you my full support uh, as my leader. I think it is what we see in the person of a leader um, let me just check this. Uh, I'm going to try that. hope it's settled that one. Uh, what will you model to me? I think it is what we see in the person of a leader that would make us willing to trust him and to, to follow him or her. So really I think it is the quality of the leader's character and his example of personal mastery that uh, ultimately establish, establishes the, the relationship of true leader and willing follower. So that, uh, to my mind, is the first, first question. The second one is, what is the destination? We know that we are motivated mainly by a mental picture of a desired future. And um, in other words, a vision. So does the leader have a vision and a sense of direction towards that, uh, that vision is, is what I would want my leader to, to be able to communicate and demonstrate. As a, as a follower, I want to be convinced that uh, of my leader's purposefulness and his competence also in, in the area that we will, or the territory that we will moving in and through uh, as, we, as we join in a journey towards that uh, desired destination. Um, so it's really also the ability of the leader to adapt personally, but also to lead change. That is all part of this uh, answer that uh, we expect from our leaders. And then the third question, how will you engage me? Uh, you might be a wonderful person with a great character, with drive and uh, strategic ability. However, if you don't know how or you don't want to make me actively part of the journey, uh, you still won't have my full support. Um, and I, I think it's true that we only experience full meaning uh, if we are truly involved uh, also as a whole person, meaning that it's not only my hand, my actions, things, the work I do, but um, and also not even just my hands and my, my thinking, but, but really also my heart and soul. It is the whole person that wants to be involved um, to experience true meaning as we uh, pursue a, a particular vision. As a follower, I want to feel that the leader value me and has the skill and will engage 
me meaningful in a meaningful way. So I think also with this we expect to be inspired by the leader and to experience even a degree of charisma. And if I say that, I don't mean charisma in the sense of a stage charisma. I mean it uh, in the sense that uh, the leader has the intent to connect with me and uh, also brings his uh, energy and um, and uh, liveliness uh, to uh, to the work environment and to our particular relationship. So those I think uh, are the important questions and I want to go into them a little bit further as we move to the next slide here. So if we think about character, um, let's talk a little bit about it because what really is character? Uh, one one uh, simple answer um, that I came across is to say that uh, if your reputation is all to do with what others think of you, character is really who you are when nobody is watching. Um, so that is one way of describing it and I think also a very good way of putting it. But I do think that character shines through for others also to, to, to notice and to recognize in a person and I want to give you a number of examples uh, that I believe where it, where it happens. I think when, when the leader is willing to admit to mistakes and ask forgiveness, um, that would be one clear example of, of character. We all have poor judgment at times, but uh, then to admit to mistakes and uh, ask for forgiveness, that I think is a sign of character. And then also we all experience serious setbacks in life um, when we feel that we've been hit hard and, uh, and it's tough to get up and, and face the world again, face our challenges. But then if we see in a person the, the ability, the strength, the inner strength to get up and face what is in front of him or her, I think that is a sign of character. Maybe something else as well is where we all are confronted with social pressures and uh, various temptations in life. Um, it is character that comes through when uh, a person walks away from it and uh, even if it's uh, at the loss of popularity and um, just say true to his moral values, that would be a sign of character. We all enjoy recognition and our time in the spotlight is another one. And um, so if we have succeeded uh, and uh, received praise, it is, uh, it is good for our ego and we enjoy that. But in that situation, to remain humble and uh, to keep our focus on, on the bigger picture, in other words, how others also supported us to, to uh, achieve that success uh, through years, uh, we needed a lot of support from others and uh, contributions to our lives. Um, to acknowledge that I think is also a sign of character. Also, I think then if in turn we would be willing to praise uh, others when, when they achieve success, even if it's perhaps a competitor, um, somebody that we uh, might have been in some context, uh, context with, but to, to truly from the heart also acknowledge and, and praise somebody else. That I think is also a sign of character. Last one I want to share is that uh, yes, we get up all, all get up in the mornings and we, we basically have our own concerns and dreams um, and uh, that would be upfront in our minds. But uh, if we truly have the kind of empathy with fellow human beings that we are prepared to, to sometimes stop and, uh, and give our attention, willing to listen, share with others and help and support them, uplift them, uh, in spite of our uh, own interests, I think that is also obviously signs of character. So just some thoughts on, on character. And then a big test for character 
Um, I agree with, with Abram Lincoln when he, he said nearly all men can stand adversity, but if you want to test a man's character, give him power. And we know this is very true in life, that uh, it's that sense of power that sometimes can erode uh, elements of char character. So it's character, I think, what we want to see in the leader, what the leader needs to model, uh, those aspects that I refer to and some more. Also integrity, which is uh, really closely, I think, linked to character. Courage, yes, also character aspect. And personal mastery, that's the sense also of or the importance of self-awareness and um, uh, the ability to to stay in control of your own uh, emotions, but also much more than that, your, your focus, your discipline. Uh, those are the things I think we want to see modeled by leaders. So the three questions I think uh, represent three areas of leadership as well as leadership development. And maybe it's quite common, but uh, to me, it's all to do with uh, leading self, leading change, and leading others. Um, and those three areas are interlinked so that the way we are able to lead ourselves, all the, the aspects that we, we mentioned, obviously uh, interlink with our ability to, to lead change and uh, to lead others. If we think of leadership as being basically the three C's, uh, three words that uh, summarize leadership or the essence of it uh, in a way, then I think it also fits in well in this uh, model that you see here. Because leading self really is the character um, that is important and uh, the growth and building of character. Leading change has a lot to do with, with competence, that ability to uh, be strategic and uh, understand what is needed to, to move forward uh, uh, in a particular role of responsibility and understand what is needed to, to grow the organization, matter of, of, of competence. And leading others, as I mentioned, an aspect of charisma, but again, we need to understand the word in, in, in the right way. Now, I think, again, to, to be able to grow uh, to the level where we can adequately answer to the, the three key questions that followers put to their leaders um, and live, live those, uh, those answers, I think uh, there is a need to shift our thinking uh, in, in, in many ways. Um, because the, the, the status of leadership, going back to the three, three areas, I think what we've seen is uh, a lot of focus uh, in recent decades on, on the ability, the, the, the competence of the leader to be strategic, to understand uh, what is needed to, to lead change in an organization. Um, a lot of focus on, on, on those abilities and with that a lot of focus on the the knowledge aspect, the, the, the intellectual aspect uh, in the leader. Less so I think on uh, uh, other, the other two areas of leading self and, and leading others. Uh, strategy, as important as it is, uh, in the words of Kaufman and, and Sorensen in their book uh, culture eats strategy for lunch, uh, strategy is, is still only the promise where this culture uh, needs to deliver it. And uh, the less we engage with culture and uh, just hope that things will work out uh, well once we move away from our uh, strategy sessions and, and uh, documented them and know now at least uh, at the intellectual level where we want to go, um, then we might find time and time again that with all the expectations we had from our strategy, uh, not much really changed, not much uh, of what we hoped would, uh, would follow did in fact 
uh, came to being. Um, I often hear that, you know, when we go into an organization that uh, you hear, you'll hear at perhaps middle management level or senior management level say, you know, they've changed the strategy again. And when I hear that, I, um, I sense that they are actually with the expression on their faces saying three things. And uh, the one is that uh, I'm experiencing this as yet another disruption to what, what I enjoy doing and hope to do. Uh, in my work life. The second uh, experience is that of uh, it's being, you know, the strategy is, is from the top, it's imposed on us. And uh, as we know, people support only what they create. Uh, it's, it's only when we feel that we have uh, given our own uh, s support to it and, and creative thinking to it that we fully commit and fully support. And then also, um, from from that saying, I would I, I I can hear people feeling that it's more or less senseless, particularly if they have been in the in the organisation for for a long time, ten or or more years or so, and they reflect back, they would tell you, you know what, uh, this new strategy, in fact, is something we had uh, five or six years ago. It's the same things. We've gone the full, full circle. Uh, and um, that actually becomes demotivating simply because we overvalue our plans and undervalue our engagement with people. Um, so I think that is the, the, the key shift uh, that needs to take place. And that's not to say strategy is not important, of course it is, but to balance it better with our engagement at the cultural level, how we grow and uh, give ourselves also to the building of relationships and the environment for others to excel in. I think that, that, is, uh, that is key. So it's, it's really shift also from head and hand to heart and soul, from focusing on the what and how to why and what for, uh, from changing processes and tools to perhaps more a change of heart and uh, attitude. So if we review what um, the expectations of leaders were you know, over time, um, then um, there's also something to, to understand in terms of the story, how it unfolds, and how we need to adapt to a new environment. Because obviously, when if we lived in the ancient times, we probably would be looking for a tall and a brave leader, a courageous leader who would uh, take the battle to, to the opponent because it's all to do with territorial dominance. And then later on also we uh, revered leaders because what we believed would have been the spiritual sanction, bishops and kings, and uh, that would be what distinguished uh, leaders at that time. Uh, in the scientific revolution, we would probably be looking for the brightest scientific minds and um, see them as, as leaders for the future. And then as the world became more ordered and specialized and hierarchically structured in governments, institutions, businesses and many other types of organizations, then we saw that the technical ability or functional ability and uh, also political astuteness became key features in how people were able to rise to the top and then be recognized as leaders. Unfortunately, what, uh, what really fits that, uh, that requ those requirements and, and uh, view of leadership um, more often than not became a command and control style uh, with uh, a very much power conscious environment. And um, of course the outcome of that is, is fear cultures uh, where people can't speak their minds freely and the truth is seldom faced. And uh, the result being that people either leave or try and find a more enjoyable place and, uh, or else they just uh, disengage. And this again I think is where we, we, we still need to go quite a long way in how we understand leadership and 
also our requirements uh, or criteria for development. Uh, it's my belief that we um, today looking when looking for leaders we focus very much on uh, these set of requirements. We look at the knowledge base of a person, you know, does he or she have enough a depth of knowledge and uh, so obviously the the profile, the, the CV is important. Next is then experience. Do you have experience and what is your experience? And uh, especially you know, it's to do with all the, the how to do things, uh, that functional ability. Um, and then as a third requirement, uh, probably looking for some strategic and tactical skills in a position of power. Question would be, you know, does this person uh, deliver and uh, secure quick results by using also the the power of of his position. Now, I've come to think of it, if you look at those three areas, then certainly one must say that uh, you can almost be forgiven if you can tick those boxes to feel that you're quite superior to the rest. Uh, those are all good for for the ego. And uh, the result being, I think, that um, many would look at leadership um, in, in, in that uh, way of thinking uh, as a leadership uh, as a challenge that, uh, you know, it, it is for them how to be able to stand up and uh, convince others uh, in the uh, in the budget rooms, the planning rooms, the strategy sessions, so it becomes really a battle of wits and egos and unfortunately those things are not really uh, going well for true teamwork and uh, cooperation because it's mainly me versus others. So it's a very competitive environment whereas we would like to see our organization cooperate uh, willingly and meaningfully and uh, support the leader. Uh, from that base. Well, if we understand leadership excellence as a matter of individual performance, that's one thing, but if we think of leadership as the ability to work with and through others, that's a different matter. And this is where I believe the following are important, and that's awareness. Um, it seems so simple and yet it's, it's so hard to find and, and, and it really requires a lot of focus and growth to, to um, to build awareness. As a start, starting point, it requires obviously openness, vulnerability and humility to grow in, in self-awareness. And uh, as we know with the chips of, uh, on our shoulders of, of knowledge, experience and positional power, we tend to filter out all the, the important feedback that might be damaging to our ego and that uh, would, would have helped us to, to be more self-aware. Self -aware is then the, also the foundation for being aware of others and for regulating uh, ourselves and also being effective in our relationships and social connections with others. And then the second one is inner work and reflection. That's reflection and self-challenge. Um, yeah, the, it's one thing to be aware of things but uh, and another to, to really put put that as a, those feedback as a, as a challenge to yourselves. Um, as we know that uh, from reading the uh, biographies or stories that uh, exemplary readers can, can tell us, the make or break in their growth as leaders were the challenges they put to themselves in response to the challenges they experienced from outside. So we have to, to see how people also uh, commit themselves to to uh, do the inner work, the inner path. And the last one is what I call context sensitive leadership responses, responses the use of inner wisdom. Um, yeah, we know that um, in leadership it is it is key to to respond appropriately and wisely to to various challenges and that's why textbook knowledge uh, is not really helpful because it all depends on the situation and how you apply it, uh, the wisdom for, for every situation in an effective way 
and uh, through that show your your leadership. Leadership in its proper sense uh, would always be authentic, spontaneous, and from within. Um, so it is only once we've internalized things and, and, and grow our wisdom that we become stronger as leaders. Uh, in this uh, old criteria development, uh, development focus, you will typically find a lot of advocacy, whereas here uh, the, the focus is on questioning and shared learning. This might be good for a transactional type environment, whereas this is what is needed for a truly transformational in environment. So again, why is the shift needed, would one say? Um, if we look at changes in our society, I find the work of uh, Rolf Jensen and Mika Altone, I'm not sure of the pronunciation there, but the Renaissance Society is, is, a, is a fantastic uh, book, it's a recent publication, um, to also illustrate and highlight the, the shifts in our society and how leaders need to, to respond to those. I think mainly it's, it's the shift from, say, a rational answer to everything to more what is it that we feel gives me, give meaning to our lives, and even from materialism to, to spirit, spirituality. And this is some of the quotes that I thought I would like to share with you, because he says, you know, from materialism and economic measurements to meaning and measuring of well-being, you actually speculate that uh, uh, in future, nations which no longer use GPI uh, figures as an indication of success, but uh, happiness indicators. And uh, imagine the current race to dominate the world economy being transformed into a race for well-being. Perhaps in 15 years we will have just as many experts studying emotional well-being as we have economists today. People are both body and spirit. The spiritual aspect of humanity is coming back to us and uh, this one as well, all business people should ask what kind of emotional appeal, what kind of meaning, or which story are we selling? What dreams are we fulfilling? The same applies to services. Anyone seeking success in the market of the future will have to be a storyteller. I think uh, is, is, is very accurate in, in how he summarized the situation. The narrative approach in leadership, I think, brings forward a completely new dimension that currently is still suppressed uh, in the workplace. It opens the door to our humanity as well as ability to truly transform as we realize that we uh, actually are authors of our stories and can rewrite it. So it's to move away from labeling and argumenting and really to, to share in the story and support how we can rewrite our different stories also as an organization. Because human beings like meaning of their lives through, uh, through the stories they tell. So if we think about it uh, you know, as, as industrialists, as specialists, economists, of course we, we know how to build tall buildings today and uh, that we, we need deep foundations, dig deep foundations to be able to build those buildings uh, to serve the material world. Well, in the same vein, I believe it is important now to understand and uh, embrace the challenge to also build tall buildings of a different nature, uh, buildings that would be of a spiritual nature, that, that uh, motivate heart and soul, and also for that we need deeper foundations as we see is needed for a tree to grow, to grow taller, obviously the roots also need uh, to, to go deeper. And I think we should apply this metaphor also to leadership um, as uh, somebody like Otto Sharma also indicates. The blind spot in current leaders' thought is that they know all about what leaders do and what, how they do it, but not know about the source level, that is the inner place or the state of awareness from which leaders and social systems operate. Uh, leadership then I think is built on personal growth or else it is nothing but position, ego building and uh, tactics. And if we say personal growth or character growth or spiritual development, uh, this is what I can close with. I trust I still have a, number, a few minutes. But uh, 
to look at the work of Otto, Otto Schaber. I think this is so helpful, the theory U, uh, where he just explains that it's all to do with our levels of awareness and it's really a, a deep growth process that, uh, that uh, will help us to uh, ultimately become stronger and uh, more holistic leaders from open mind to open heart to an open world, three different levels. Uh, our default, as we know in life, is to download just patterns from the past and uh, it requires us to, to actually suspend our voice of judgment um, to see with fresh eyes, but that's just at the level of having an open mind, entertaining new ideas, new thoughts, uh, new learning, um, that is important. Yet it is not the full process of, uh, of heightened awareness. Um, the next one is to sense from the field or to feel it with the heart. So it's one thing to intellectually understand something as, as a new truth. It's a different thing to really embrace it uh, and, and uh, get a sense of it and feel it uh, in your heart. Uh, so we need to overcome our voice of judgment but also our voice of cynicism. Uh, and this is, we can understand this because uh, we, we know that we, we tend to become more cynical in life. Um, as we grow older in particular, a lot of expectations that were not fulfilled, people that disappoint us, um, life is not working out the way we hoped for, and we become cynical. So we try and protect our hearts and feelings and uh, as a result, unfortunately, that's where we don't allow also for the good things that, uh, that we need to embrace fully um, to, to a higher level, higher level of awareness. And then the very last one, the most difficult, is to let go because surely we know this, that particularly high performers, uh, they truly uh, value their sense of control and that's also their biggest fear, that they might lose control. But this, unfortunately, plays a very big part in keeping us from growing spiritually. Um, as much as leaders believe they need to learn everything there is, <coughs> is to learn in their field, uh, be it business or otherwise, there is a greater need for them to learn at the deeper levels of their being. So the next one here is the open world. That's to get to the point where we let go, and the voice in ourselves that we need to overcome is the voice of fear. And it's really only then that we uh, can truly connect again with uh, who we are, who is myself, um, if you take away my uh, control models that I have, um, who am I really in essence and uh, what is the purpose? That is to connect with the source and he calls it uh, pre-sensing. From there you let go and uh, crystallize vision and intention, prototype the new by linking head, heart and hand and then operate from the whole. So it's just a model, of course, and uh, the reality is uh, very much a different story where often it's only the, when we feel that we've come against the wall and um, we uh, can no longer rely on all the things that we've built up and we feel it's the end of the path and it's really a sense of dying and letting go uh, of what we were used to and how we know ourselves before we can start uh, growing into a, a new person uh, and uh, operate from the whole as we see. This in itself of course is, 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 is uh, such a important um, understanding. It's not something we can manufacture or engineer in our lives, put in a program uh, because it's not really uh, anything you can manipulate. But you can remain open and be willing to be part of this journey um, and uh, to accept what also comes to you when you're not necessarily in control of everything. Um, so, just to close then with, uh, answer the, to answer the followers three questions, as I've explained, I think we've 
uh, well, let me first just repeat, is your life an example of character, integrity, courage, and personal mastery? Can you show me the destination and how to get there? And how am I to travel with you on this journey? Those would be the three questions. I think we've paid a lot of attention in terms of competence of the leader, focusing on strategy and uh, many aspects uh, in that area. Uh, the shift uh, I need I think is needed is to understand and appreciate fully what it means to lead self, build character and model all those things and uh, from there to be able to also lead others well in the field of relationships. Um, that way we need, we can uh, complete the circle and uh, be st stronger as leaders. I thought I would like to end this presentation with uh, being a South African uh, with the next uh, an example of Mandela and share with you this idea. Surely if we recognize leadership excellence in the person of Nelson Mandela, we should endeavor to look for and grow the qualities he lived and demonstrated. For organizations, I think it's not a call to become more touchy or feely, but to responsibly address the context within which business decisions are taken and to ensure that these decisions accurately reflect the organization's heart, mind and soul, be this in strategy, finance, marketing, technology and corporate social values. With that, I close my presentation. Thank you.